We told you about shocking results from DNA kits. Lives have been turned upside down. So many of you are telling us stories of your own. We had to share another, and this one plays out like a juicy novel. Here's Kevin Reese with tonight's WFAA original. The DNA story Catherine St. Clair told me was a doozy. I'm still shocked. I am still shocked. One of those home test kits delivered a bombshell. Her dad was not her biological dad. Somebody else was. But this rocked your world. Oh, God. You have no idea. She'd become an NPE, what biologists call a DNA test with a non-paternal event. She prefers to call it not parent expected. As MPEs, it stings when people say nothing's changed, everything's changed. And in her creation of an online support group, she found there were thousands more across the world just like her. With strands of DNA and family secrets being unraveled, one test kit at a time. Raise your hand up. Okay. Which took yeah. me to Irving to meet Susan Chambers, who told me she had a doozy of a DNA story to tell too. The mom who raised you told you this story? When I was very young. Yeah. Probably so young, I don't remember her telling me. Yeah, you don't remember not knowing. I don't, yeah, I do not remember not knowing ever. I've always known. Her biological mom gave her up for adoption at birth. A nurse at the hospital adopted her and always told her where she came from. She was very honest and open with me. That's probably why my story never bothered me. A story about her biological parents and a story about a train. That it was 1966, her biological mom was traveling alone until a Marine on a two week leave from Vietnam strolled by and said hello. The train ride was uh, supposed to be a relaxing time for him. Mm -hmm. So clearly it was. Yes, I was um, conceived on a passenger train. Just someone that he never heard from again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Strangers. Nine months later in Amarillo, given up for adoption immediately at birth, she never knew who that stranger, that mystery Marine I might be. Just assumed I would never find him because I had no name or anything to go on other than I knew he was a passenger on a train in September of 1966. Which takes us to one of those home DNA test kits again. One that told Susan she was closely related to a young man in Michigan. And in the flurry of emails they threw back and forth at each other, the man realized his grandfather had been a Marine in the Vietnam War. Could he be Susan Chambers' dad? Earlier this month, Susan traveled to Michigan. I dialed her up on Skype. Meet Bob Dakin, the Marine on the train. As soon as she relayed the story to me about the train ride, yeah, I knew it was me. I met her birth mother in the club car drinking beer. And we shared four or five days together on the train. What, what did he tell you? He had no knowledge of you. He didn't know you existed. Exactly. He had no clue. I was a big surprise. and something that he had to work through too. It was a shocker, don't kid yourself. I had a hard time dealing with it. Thinking about, you know, all those years. Don't get me emotional now. <laughs> emotional because yes, there is regret that neither dad nor daughter knew about the other. But for them now, it's a DNA NPE story with a happy ending. Well, I call her daughter yeah. and she calls me dad. I do, yes. Susan has her dad, has a new family, including four brothers and sisters. We love each other. Oh, uh, we're very thankful. We couldn't ask for a better daughter. Back in her office in Irving, Susan now has a picture of her father, the man whose eyes and nose and likeness she shares, in a frame that says, when we have each other, we have everything. That's true, yes, That's true. 100%. Yeah, we just like complete each other. We're trying to make up for 53 years, you know, so. 52. 52, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a beautiful time, it really has. And uh, I'm so thankful. God works awesome. in strange ways. Yes, he does. But then again, so does DNA. In Irving, I'm Kevin Reese.